Hello, Internet, and welcome to the Miners World Podcast of week of April the 18th, 2013. I am your Grandmaster Podcaster, Big Mike. Joining me tonight is uh, Chairman with the Hat, Chris. Say hello. What's up? All right. Joining us, Internet. as always, is our faithful uh, faithful technology wizard, CD Rum. What's up? And joining us new this week is, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to call you, but whatever, Danny J. Call it Danny. Yeah, Danny. We're going to go with Danny. And also this week is our very special guest, uh, Mark Me- Mark Meir from uh, the end of Baldur's Gate 2. <laughs> yeah, oh, Red Sand. And Red Sand. <laughs> and then in between those projects, I, I did uh, the Mass Effect trilogy. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I've heard yeah. about that. It's pretty big. <laughs> Minor bit. <laughs> so yeah, our our fate is sealed tonight. Uh, th- thank you for your time, Mark. Not at all. Thanks for having me. Dan, is it your sister that has the N seven tattoo, or was it somebody else? Uh, she doesn't have a tattoo. No, well, I know of people who do. Okay, I was someone's yeah, sister. sister with a Paragon tattoo. tattoo. Yeah. I would like to note that none of us are mentally insane. <laughs> <laughs> we all happen to be pretty big Mass Effect fans here, though. Glad to hear you it. Know that wasn't very Paragon, Renegade for Life. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had a hard time with Renegade I've had one choices. of each. It, I've had one of each. seemed too out of my way to be a dick <laughs> when you Renegade. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. but it, you got to admit, it's hard to resist a Renegade interrupt sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always go for the pistol whip. I'll admit it. <laughs> There's never a wrong time for a pistol whip. My favorite in Mass Effect 2, when, when the guys are on, when you're on Tuchanka and you blow up the gas tank while the guy's expositing to you. <laughs> so, I mean, what, what is it like to be a part of, like, something that's become so big in, uh, like, you know, like, the whole culture? Like, everyone knows about Mass Effect. It's almost as, as big as Star Wars, as far as recognition <laughs> goes. Well, it's it's pretty big. I mean, I, I you know I'd, I'd hesitate to compare it to Star Wars necessarily, but other people have. So I I've think heard Mass are... Effect two compared to Empire Strikes Back, and that is a bold statement. <laughs> it's it's rather bold, and it's very high praise. And of course, I I will lap it up certainly, and so, you know I'm sure all the people at Bioware are very happy about that too. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. Uh, I'm. You know, I'm a geek myself. I'm a fan. I'm a gamer. I read comic books and stuff. So, you know, I I went to cons. So now to get paid to go to cons or have people invite me to cons is uh, pretty amazing. It's uh, yeah. Did, did you make that uh, the N7 armor that you wear? I, I did not. Uh, that was actually made for me by a fellow by the name of David Carpenter, and uh, his company is called Evil FX Props and Armor. And uh, David, uh, I had met him actually at Dragon Con a couple of years ago. And uh, just I bumped into he and his uh, partner Jane when they were both dressed in shepherd armor. And uh, oh, uh, you know, so cool. I, I at the time I was actually wearing a Sinestro core costume. Of course. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I was wear, I was dressed as Hunter S. Thompson as a member of the Sinestro press corps. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was a good costume. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so I'd inter- you know we'd become friends. Uh, and uh, so just before last Dragon Con. Uh, David got a hold of me and said, "Hey, man, I'll make you a free set of Mass Effect armor." And I was like, "Yeah, I'll wear it, of course." <laughs> and uh, I walked, wore it in the parade and everything. He did a fantastic job. He does he does amazing work. He actually uh, he he often puts like tutorials up online, and uh, you know sometimes he'll just stream while he's in the workshop. Just like today, we're making leg armor, and you know he'd just be cranking out like ten sets of leg armor and showing you exactly how he does it. He's a really talented guy, uh, and my armor. Uh, in particular, I asked him to do it half Paragon and half Renegade, sort of like a two-face Shepherd kind of look. Oh, that's and so, cool. Yeah, and uh, it lights up at the back, and the, of course he put Renegade lights on one side and Paragon lights on the other. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, all right. It's funny we're getting all the DC references out of the way because I've just been playing way too much Batman lately. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Justice. So, um, how did you... <clears throat> get into the uh, gaming industry anyway like what when did you like how did you first get your first voice acting job for Bioware uh, well you mentioned it earlier it was in uh, Baldur's Gate 2 it was in the very final cut scene uh, I did one line yeah we were talking about that before actually yeah. we remember it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and fate uh, is sealed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, you know, the fate of the school is sealed. That uh, you can find it on YouTube, I think. Uh, and basically, that was my first work. Uh, some friends of mine had worked for Bioware before, and I just went to one of their auditions. Ended up getting that part, and they kept calling me back for additional work. And so they uh, do have you on speed dial. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, because I think because again because I had that background and especially because they were doing Dungeons and Dragons games at the time, uh, we had that shorthand that you know they could tell me okay you're playing you know a kobold shaman in this scene and I'd know exactly what that was without having to ask you know what the hell is a kobold and, <laughs> you know I could even tell them how many hit dice something had so yeah they uh, nice. wow. yeah I think I think that helped in them calling me back and so subsequent to that I. I, I believe my second work was on uh, Baldur's Gate 2 uh, Throne of Baal. The first one was Shadows of On. And uh, I got to play Sirik, the god of murder, in that. And he's like an established Forgotten Realms character. And yeah, I've read books about it. Yeah. ever. Yeah, Sirik, the god of murder. Uh, <laughs> that, that, is, that is the most badass title ever. God yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, because, you know, I'd read novels with that character in it. In fact, I'd read the novel about how he descended to godhood. So it was really, it was really cool to so get. So you to really play. prepared for the role. You didn't just oh, like sure. show up one day and be like, "Okay, I'm going to try this out." Well, no, I mean, it wasn't even a matter of preparation. It was like I'd already read the books at that point. Oh, that's and, awesome! Yeah, and like I already played D and D, so it was like, "What? I get to be Siric in this?" You know, in addition to you know, like I think I played a Baylor demon and some uh, like an orc shaman or a hobgoblin shaman. So they just don't make them like they used to. Yeah, exactly, uh, and. <laughs> Well, and funnily enough, uh, I've just been working on the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition stuff from Overhaul Games. And so it was like literally revisiting some of my earliest work uh, in uh, in video games. So they didn't just take old audio? Like you actually re-recorded everything? Uh, oh, no, no. Like they, they took the old audio, like the, the audio for the first game, and they basically added new characters, like new NPCs for the party, of which I was one. I was a, a monk, a uh, new character class, and nice. so one of, one of the companion characters. And then there was a, an entirely new uh, sort of sub-game called The Black Pits, which is, which is essentially like a mm -hmm. gladiatorial fighting game. And I played the, the main villain of that, who was a evil drow sorcerer named Baloth the Entertainer. And uh, I guess wow. I think... I think I was essentially channeling uh, Mark Hamill's Joker uh, in that performance. <laughs> I, it was more Batman. <laughs> I I owe a lot to Mark Hamill for uh, for my portrayal of Bailoff, certainly. And uh, well, I actually, I, sorry. So we all owe a lot to Mark Hamill. We all owe a lot to Mark Hamill. <laughs> And uh, actually, just recently, uh, I think I'm allowed to say this because they've announced the game. Uh, I've been doing some work on Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Hooray! Yeah. So literally the very first game that I ever I ever worked on, uh, and uh, so yeah, playing like lots and lots of characters in those games, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, how different is it getting into the voice acting or the gaming industry in general today than it was then? Because it wasn't that long ago, but the industry has just evolved and changed so much in a short amount of time. It's true. It's expanded like at at a geometric rate it's like since you know I first did my first vo voice work that would have been like probably 1999 2000 and uh, I was I, I'll admit it I was very lucky to get in on the ground floor with Bioware like when they were uh, just starting out because some of these games are movie budgets now like oh yeah and bringing in bringing in as much money as like a major motion picture would you know or more yeah, bringing uh, and, in talent from them, like Martin Sheen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and of course, you've seen like uh, much like uh, happened in animated features and and cartoons and things like that. You're seeing more and more celebrities getting cast uh, in these roles. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Like one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, what was it like working with Martin Sheen? How it was. It was amazing. It was. Was, uh, was he terrifying? Uh, well, that's the thing. I uh, I'd recorded you know uh, all of uh, Mass Effect Two without meeting him, and uh, during the the recording process of Three, I did some of my recording down in Los Angeles, and uh, got to to sit in on one of his sessions, and he was just the nicest guy ever. So he was not remotely terrifying, <laughs> and uh, you know it was it was a great honor to meet him. It was amazing. He was uh, you know really funny. He joked around, uh, told me it was just before he'd. Uh, he got cast, or sorry, rather, just after he'd been cast as Uncle Ben in uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Oh wow, and, he's, he's uh, such a good actor too. <laughs> he saw, he is great, and like, you know, the, the as Spider-Man, and then and I always say, you know, 
one of the greatest uh, fictional presidents the United States has ever had. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Definitely. Also, uh, quick question. Does he perpetually walk around with a uh, glass of bourbon? I did not see him uh, with a glass of bourbon, but he did quote Apocalypse Now when he was in the sound booth. That's awesome. <laughs> Close so, enough. And it, and it wasn't even his line, it was Brando's line. He did, you know, the horror, the horror. <laughs> and uh, so when he, he was talking about being cast as Uncle Ben, and, you know, he admitted he didn't know much about comic books, and he was just like, you know, I thought Uncle Ben was the rice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah, he was. Uh, it was really nice to meet him. And uh, on that same trip, actually, I got to meet Seth Green. Although, ironically enough, it wasn't anything to do with the game. It was. Uh, it was just socially. We uh, we both are friends with Nathan Fillion, and Nathan invited us both out to uh, to an event one night in Los Angeles. And so <laughs> I I was able to go up to Seth and say, well, actually, Mr. Green, we we worked together already. And, you know, that was pretty thrilling. I was so sounds like the most for, awesome was... like. Night, like, like dinner ever. Trip, yeah, right? I was so pulling for Nathan Fillion for that Green Lantern role. Oh, like, he's I, technically Green Lantern already. He is. Yeah, but, actually, he's uh, Green Lantern in a lot of the animated stuff, and he's. I think he's going to be uh, Green Lantern in Flashpoint uh, coming up. Ooh. I heard a rumor he was. Uh, he tried out for the live action movie role, or I don't. Know, there was something. I'm not a hundred percent sure what the details were, but oh man, that would have been amazing. I think. It was great. I remember uh, when it was rumored that he was going to be Ant-Man and that Ant-Man was going to be in the Avengers movie. And uh, like, so I, like, I saw this online and it had been reported in enough news sources that I thought it was legit. And so like, I just contacted him and was just like, hey, man, congratulations. You're Hank Pym. That's so awesome. And you know, he, he wrote me back. He was just like, no, nah, man, totally fake, totally fake. And there was like, because they went into detail. I think it was like from Comic-Con or something. There was a report that you know, he'd showed up in a fake mustache and had like this jokey bit with Joss Whedon and the, you know, was, <laughs> I figured there was too much detail and it had been reported in too many sources for it to be fake, but as it turns out it was, so. So, Captain Malcolm and Commander Shepard did walk into a bar. <laughs> we have, yeah, we've walked into bars before. With Joker. Yes, and as a matter of fact, yeah, we did. And, uh, uh, actually we'll probably be walking into a bar sometime uh, next weekend at the Calgary Expo. So, uh, <laughs> Nathan is there and so am I, so. I would, I would, I would love to meet Nathan. I always was a pretty big fan of him. I, oh, he's everything great. he's done, he's killed it. Oh yeah, man. He's and we go uh, back to uh, the early improv days because he's uh, alumni of Rapid Fire Theater, which is the theater sports company here in town. And he did also a show called Dynasty, the live improvised soap opera that I that I still do. And uh, he just recently, uh, a couple of years ago, came back for the 30th anniversary of theater sports and uh, Dynasty's 20th anniversary. And of course, you know, he he was worried because he said, "Ah, oh, my improv's kind of rusty." And then stepped onto stage, killed it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of improv, uh, I hear you like to do marathon improv. I do do marathon improv. Uh, it's a thing called, uh, well, here it's called the Sopathon, and uh, some friends of ours from London, England, actually started their own version called the Improvathon. And uh, it's basically a 50 hour long improv marathon with one continuous narrative. And uh, usually you're playing the same <laughs> character all the way through as well. So it's it's pretty interesting. It's uh it's been ca compared to a vision quest, to dropping acid, uh, <laughs> because many uh many of the actors do it without sleeping, and I was actually the very first guy to go all the way through and prove it could be done without dying, and uh, subsequently, yeah. Lots, yeah, lots of people have done it, but uh, let's see, I'm up to 22 times all the way through, counting the uh, wow. the ones and and the ones here. Is this something you've done? Since of like after voice acting, or were you doing this way before you got into voice acting, or did voice acting just kind of fall into your lap, or was this something you knew you wanted to do? Oh, actually, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm largely uh, like a theater actor and an improviser, and that's kind of my focus. Actually, is uh, is doing improv, and uh, you know, I go around the world and do that. And when you're an actor, of course, you'll do gigs that come along, and whether that's voiceover or uh, you know, video game voice acting or commercials or things like that. When you you know when you make your living at acting, you'll go to a lot of different kinds of auditions. Really and neat so, way to pay the bills. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, with uh, with Mass Effect and whatnot, of course, my profile as a voice actor has been raised somewhat, so I'm doing more of that. But uh, my first love is probably improv, and uh, I can't imagine ever not doing improv. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, because I was I was wondering, like, do people just you know 
like do they just want to become a voice actor or is this something that like all you probably you've met a lot of voice actors I'm assuming throughout your career well, actually, actually guys hold on one second I'll be right with you okay right, no problem yep so uh while we have a moment here let's talk about uh our friend over at Twitch TV I was oh, reading about earlier oh, this man. guy <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it out of the way. Disability, yeah, yeah, yeah. get millions of dollars. Yeah. Oh, All right, right, right. Lead the us in. Lead us in. Hello, I am back. I am back. Please answer. Right. Ask, ask Welcome me back. again. Yeah. Um. Oh, what are we talking about now? We'll, we'll we'll get back to it. Yeah. Okay. Um. I, I was asking, like, from all the, is voice acting something that, uh, like you normally would see somebody working hard to become, or is it just kind of like you know other actors? kind of just found their way into it is what I'm asking well I, I don't there aren't many voice actors of my acquaintance who just you know this is all I ever wanted to do and you know I, I've only ever done voice acting like usually you come to voice acting through other means and uh, you know whether it's theater whether it's film or television and uh, and again like I know of very few actors who are professional actors who exclusively do one kind of acting like you know you, you'll do plays you'll do film you'll do television and then, and then more commercial work as well. All right, so uh, you're running out of time, so I just wanted to set this record straight. Yes. What is your What is your favorite store on the Citadel? Uh, it's whatever <laughs> store I happen to be in at the time that gives me a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, sir. Well played. <laughs> all right, right, right. So, I don't know. When when you're in the booth, do you uh? Do you get any creative input, or is it all like all controlled by like the Shadow Council from XCOM or something? You know, like there's there's the guy who's there. He's going off script. The guy behind the glass. Well, no. The thing is, like, video games, even more than film, are such a collaborative medium that by the time uh, you know dialogue gets to me and say Jennifer Hale, like the female Shepard, then well, and that's the other thing. We're both doing the same dialogue, so our dialogue has to match. Uh, so there's really not too much room for improv within the booth. Uh, sometimes we'd have uh, Mac or uh, one of the other writers uh, sitting in on a session, uh, and then you could, you, you know, they were usually okay with, you know, this line. It's okay, you know, it, it looks fine typed, but it's a bit of a mouthful to say out loud. So do you mind if we change it here or there, just the, the phrasing or whatnot? But certainly not elements of plot or uh, or things like that. Well, of course and, not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Wait, case, you're, not, you're not just gonna change like, oh, the the protein vi. Oh, let's let's change him to like a cat or something, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you mentioned not seeing um, Martin Sheen the entire second game when you're working on that. So uh, when I was under the assumption that when voice actors they were recording that they were acting out the scene with that person in the room, you just you just read the lines off and you have to act as if that person's there. Like you don't get what I'm saying is, like, you didn't have Martin Sheen in the room with you, and you weren't right. acting the scene. You just had to really get into the role and into the moment. Uh, well, actually, with uh, with most video games, uh, the cast don't record together. I know in animation, uh, more and more, that's uh, that is common. But you know, we had actors uh, in Canada, in uh, the U.S., in England, and so it was just impractical to get everybody together, scheduling wise, and of course, travel, etc. Uh, but we used a system called VEDA, which is uh, actually, in the first game it was all paper scripts, uh, but uh, VEDA was uh, by the second and third, we had, like it was a system where you had your words, your lines coming up on a screen, at the same time in your headphones, the other actors' performances were playing. Uh, and so, okay. so you weren't acting into a vacuum, and actually it was like really cool to like, you know, walk into the booth and suddenly you've got Keith David in your headphones, or Lance Henriksen, <laughs> or, or Martin Sheen, Seth Green. Uh, Trisha Super. Helfer, all these. It goes on, it goes on. Uh, and uh, so uh, if the other people had recorded before you, you'd have all of their performances. Sometimes some some people were missing and the director would read in their lines. And uh, if you were, if you happened to be the first person to record a scene, I guess you, you didn't have anyone else's performances, but you had the advantage, I guess, of setting the tone for the scene and then everyone else would follow you. Oh no, I got defeated. Oh, oh it's all right. You're back. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. So I'm sorry if this was asked already because I just got DC'd, but what was your favorite line to record in the Mass Effect series? Favorite line ever? Yeah. Hmm. 
Uh, there, there are so many. Like, I always usually, my joke answer is, I should go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, awesome. that's my favorite. Actually. Yeah. And it is ultimately Shepard's catchphrase because both Jennifer and I said that so many times. And they could have just paid us to say it once, but they every time it was said, we said it. And it I, I it love over. how it was pointed out in the Citadel DLC. Yeah, that was it a really sound like that. That, that, <laughs> yeah. that actually had me like really laughing. Yeah, Citadel was great for you know just the amount of in jokes and little such a fan know, service. I love. Yeah, like nice little moments for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I I assume. Uh, did you guys get to see the Blasto interaction with Shepard? Yes. Yeah, and that was great too. Like, because uh, getting to play Blasto as that you know little comedy Easter egg was fun all the way through the games, and then actually having Blasto meet Shepard that was awesome. Having Rex yell out "Man Emergency" pretty much <laughs> made that DLC for me too. That was great. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a fun one to do certainly, and uh, you know I uh, oh well here's one thing where. When, it, when I got in the booth, I suddenly had a helpful suggestion that it was far too late to implement. I was just like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if when they made the Shepherd clone, they reversed the X and Y chromosome so that male Shep would fight a female Shepherd clone and <laughs> Fem Shep would fight that a would male Shep. Really cool yeah, yeah, right? That would have been really cool to see. I'm sure. Yeah, rule, I'm sure. Rule 37, you know? Yeah. yeah right? I'm, sure, I'm sure that someone will cut that together on YouTube. Evil female Shepherd would have been terrifying. Oh dear. <laughs> Probably. Just a, just a, like crazy Jennifer Hale. That would have been that would have been great. Yeah, I'm such a fan of Jennifer's work, and I, like I was even before I got this gig, uh, and you know it was quite an honor to get cast as her opposite because she's such a busy, prolific voice actor and so great. My first uh, experience with her was Nice Little Republic. Yeah, of course, Bastila yeah, and. Uh, uh, but uh, also, I was a huge fan of hers, like from her animation stuff. Like, uh, I watch a lot of DC Comics cartoons, so of course she was like Zatanna and Giganta and Poison Ivy, and, like lots of lots of other DC characters. Oh man! And and of course her work, her most recent work on uh, the uh, Avengers cartoon, the late and lamented Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Heroes. I saluted. Yeah, it's, I I you know I I was I was really hoping that they would. Uh, Keep that one around because I was really liking it. But you know, we'll see how Avengers Assemble is. So you, yeah. you're a pretty big DC fan. Uh, what's your favorite one of the reboots? What, what's your favorite reboot? That's a very polarizing question, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been. I am reading like New Fifty Two titles. Uh, I kept up with Green Lantern. Like Green Lantern and Batman were essentially untouched by New Fifty Two, so it was like pretty easy to keep reading them. And that's those are the ones people like. Yeah, and uh, I uh, I did uh, enjoy the uh, you know the action comics uh, reboot, the initial one, uh, especially the uh, the it was sort of the special issue that Gene Ha did with the Obama Superman. <laughs> <laughs> it was like from an, an alternate Earth Superman uh, that is African American and president of the United States. It was uh, it was pretty fun. Well, hey, Lex was president. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, and actually, it, it's opened. That particular comic opened with like Superman beating up Lex Luthor, and you know Lex insisting that you know he, I'm not a racist. That's not why I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where's Superman's birth certificate? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How excited are you for the uh, new, the new Superman movie? Because I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I, like each trailer I've seen looks better and better. Uh, and uh, uh, as far as other new 52 stuff, uh, the Justice League, uh, I've been reading that, and Dial H, actually, Dial H for Hero, and uh, Earth 2, I quite enjoyed Earth 2. I was a big Justice Society fan, so I'm interested to see what they're doing with the reboot. Mm -hmm. I actually never uh, read that one. That's all right, it's cool. It's, it's basically like... I, I mean, it's not like the uh, World War II version of the Justice Society. It's all like complete reboot, but it's Jay Garrick as the Flash, but as a teenager. So interesting, anyway. I'm, Are uh, you I'm a Marvel fan at all? Oh yeah, I do. I do not discriminate Marvel versus DC. I uh, I enjoy them both. Because I see you had a pretty good hobgoblin uh, costume. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that was my Halloween costume this year. Uh, Halloween's pretty big for me. My uh, my wife and I got married on Halloween, so we have a big. Anniversary party every year. That I'm like that is a pretty crazy Halloween costume for something you're gonna wear one day a year. You must, I mean, like wow. Oh, I'm sure I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna bring it to Dragon Con this year. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, all credit for that goes to uh, my friend Brian Parsley. He uh, he sewed all the fabric parts of it, and uh, my uh, my buddies at CFX Composite Effects uh, made the silicone mask. By the way, sir, are you a Doctor Who fan? I am a Doctor Who fan, and. 
It's funny you should say that, because uh, <laughs> actually just today, uh, this very day, uh, a web series uh, called Versus Valerie. It's been running. It's uh, for a few weeks now. Uh, it's a uh, web series that started from a vlog called Sexy Nerd Girl, and this is sort of the sitcom version of it. And uh, I guest star in the most recent episode, and each episode is sort of filtered through a different fandom, sort of. The, the main character, Valerie, sort of fantasizes and imagines her life through the lens of, say, Star Trek or Star Wars. And the Doctor Who episode just went up today. Mm. And, uh, and I am the guest star in it, and I play the Doctor. David Tennant. <laughs> I swear. I the, the, I, the second I saw your profile pictures, all I had to do is muss his hair, wear the jacket, and it's done. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. My resemblance, my resemblance to David Tennant is, of course, uh, relied upon in this episode. I don't use a British, I don't use a British accent though, because I'm not actually supposed to be the Doctor. I'm just a guy she meets that reminds her of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you guys the link for that. Yeah, definitely. I would love to check that out. Actually, it's yeah. kind of interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun series for sure. Uh, it was all shot in Toronto. They got me out there uh, late last year. Yeah, I, I've, I've always wanted to uh, go out to Toronto. I heard it's a lot like New York, but a lot different. Right. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, uh, the most uh, I was in New York in 2011 for the Greenwich Village Halloween Parade, actually. And I uh, had a great time. had a great time. And I also have a good time when I go to Toronto. So I went yeah, to that parade like in <laughs> 2009, I think it yeah. was. It was, Yeah, it, it's a good time. Did you yeah, pretty cool. Parade? No, I, I, I'm not a cop. I'm going to do my first cosplay this year. At What's it going to be? Comic-Con. I'm, th I'm going to do Drake. Something easy that I can do. Oh, I want to do Elizabeth from the new Bioshock. Yeah, I was saying we should do, we should, me and you should do Elizabeth and, um, Booker? Booker, yeah. That, that, that I, uh, cool I actually saw an amazing Bioshock group at um, uh, Momocon down in Atlanta just last month. It was uh, quite impressive. Where we were supposed to have a little uh, sit-down interview for a minute, but, you know, stuff happens. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, I think uh, uh, your guy's videographer couldn't make it or whatever. Yeah, I don't even know what happened. <laughs> uh, that's, but... that's cool, man. These things happen, especially at a con. I'm actually I'm I'm glad we got to do this instead because it's definitely a lot more personal. I mean, at a con, I imagine you're running around all over the place all weekend. Generally, it's all, yeah. It's all noise, noise, noise. You can't find anyone. Oh, we have to get to the train station or whatever. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. So are you like are you a big cosplayer? Like, do you cosplay as a lot of different characters, or do you just go as Shepard a lot? Because oh I don't no, know. Uh, I mean Shepard was the the first time was at Dragon Con because uh, I didn't have a costume up till this point. Uh, <laughs> but. <costume>. Uh, <laughs> Normally, it's been uh, actually Marvel and DC supervillains. I've done, let's see, uh, I'm, I'm involved with a group called the Superhero Costuming Forum, or the SCF. Uh, they, they're the guys that do the huge, you know, Marvel and DC photo shoots at Dragon Con every year. You've probably seen pictures of them. I'm actually going to my first Dragon Con this year. Oh, excellent, man. You're going to love it. Dragon Con is like a three day Halloween party. Oh, uh, I, he I heard it's amazing. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, great time. And uh, as I say, the SCF often organizes these shoots. So let's see, like at Dragon Con, I've been uh, Bizarro, uh, Black Adam, Sinestro, uh, or rather <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson Sinestro. Uh, I had a Hydra officer's uniform. Uh, Hydra. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, one that I've been, uh, uh, I brought to the last couple of Dragon Cons. I think I'm going to bring it one more time and then let it lie fallow for a while. It's a pretty awesome costume, though. It's uh, the Super Adaptoid. I don't know if you know who that guy is. I have, no, I don't. He's I a very, don't he's very obscure. He's, uh, he's a villain of the Avengers, and he's uh, an android who can copy their powers, uh, basically copy the powers of any superhuman that it, that it can see. Uh, and so he kind of looks like an amalgam of all the Avengers that's colored green. You would think have Ultron would just like you think Ultron would just arm. make an army of these things and have it touch everyone or like uh, touch a scroll or something. <laughs> they, uh, actually, they have. Uh, I think there was an army of super adaptoids at one point, and they're usually defeated because they lack the capacity for human imagination. <laughs> oh, weaknesses. Yeah, he's a he's essentially like the you know uh, the Avengers version of Amazo uh, from the JLA. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> you gonna wear that this year to Dragon Con? Uh, yeah, there's a big uh, cosmic uh, photo shoot planned, and uh, he fits will into there. Will there be a cube? I, I'm sure there will be a cosmic cube. I've seen several. <laughs> I actually think I'm getting um, an autographed picture of you and Rana. 
I, oh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, we did. Uh, we pitched in for her trip to uh, that. She, she's got the pitch in set up through her cage. Yes, the, yeah, to come to uh, the London Comic Con. Yeah, right? very, very, very nice woman. We uh, we talked. Oh, she's to her. great. Yeah, we. I met her at Dragon Con, uh, and she gets credit for doing the cosplay, you know, as your character thing long before I did. Uh, she, for those who don't know, she's uh, the face model uh, for Samara and Morinth in the games, and. Uh, <laughs> And she's amazing, and she, of course, when she does the makeup and has the costume, she looks exactly like the character, because it is her. And, yeah, she uh, really does, too. And But she also does, like, a fantastic job on the makeup. Like, you never even see the seam on the prosthetic, and, you know, the makeup is expertly applied. I love yeah, the photos great. of her as Samara, because Samara is very, like, stout, and, you know, not, like, almost no emotion, and she's very... In her picture, she's very bubbly and like energetic, and she's always <laughs> yes. smiling. And it's, just, it's just like nuts. she's so in character. Yeah, it was yeah. actually her. It was her birthday when I saw her at PAX East. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't know, man. If she's smiling, it might be Morinth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch uh, out. Yes, and uh, and so of course uh, we did a photo shoot together uh, in our costumes at DragonCon ah. last year, and uh, Sonia Carter was the photographer at uh, I believe Soulfire Photography. And uh, she's made those photos available to Rana as a uh, sort of fundraiser. I've actually met Sonia now that I mentioned it. She was with a friend of mine, Sharice, that I believe you know too. Oh, yes, yeah, Sharice. I know Sharice. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody knows Sharice. <laughs> We're Facebook friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, I ran into her at Comic Con this year and she, in New York City, and she was doing a photo, and she was doing an X Men photo shoot with Sonia. Cool. Yeah, I'll be, uh, so yeah, I'll be bringing Super Adaptoid to uh, Dragon Con this year. I think that Hobgoblin and uh, probably Commander Shepard too, I think. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, re it's a really good costume. I, I, I love that. That's, and, and Seven Armor, I actually looked into doing it because I was, you know, I was still pretty ignorant to cosplay and I was like, Oh my God! This is a daunting <laughs> task. This is like not something that you can just pick up and make. No, man. These uh, these folks uh, who put the armor together are pretty talented, and you especially you know, I don't have an Omni Blade yet, although someone has promised to make one for me. I thus far awesome. I have. Uh, what do I got for weapons? Uh, David uh, also made me uh, a uh, Avenger assault rifle at M8, and then I've got mm. a Carnifex uh, pistol that was made. For me, by a dude named uh, Michael Kraft. Uh, if you want to uh, kill it dead, use Carnifex. Yes. <laughs> uh, he's from uh, Pillar of the Dawn Studios, and uh, the the one he makes me actually does light like the gun lights up and it can toggle between Renegade and Paragon, which is pretty cool. And I think Michael's currently working on a Crusader and uh, an Eagle uh, for me, and uh, you know the N7, the sort of exclusive N7 weapons. You should totally if if you, if you can get this done, that would be amazing. I haven't seen it yet. Blood Dragon Armor. Oh yeah, <laughs> Blood Dragon Armor is pretty cool. I have I haven't <laughs> seen it yet, and as soon as I do, that's I'm I'm getting a picture. Of that that's going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, you should just cool. have you should just have all this in your van, and like <laughs> yeah, that's my assault van. That's that's the shuttle. <laughs> what? That's the oh, what was the what was the shuttle? Um, the, the the hammerhead was it? The hammerhead. Was <laughs> It was Hammer something, I remember. Yeah, it, it was the Hammerhead. Or the, oh, or the, I, or the Mako, call it. <laughs> yeah, the Mako would be a crown, crown for you. But uh, I also have a, uh, a uh, Vorcha weapon that was made, because, I, of course, I play all the Vorcha as well. And uh, so uh, played I, I, all the Vorcha? Guy, uh, I did, yeah, I do. Anytime you see a Vorcha in the game, it's me. Wow, wow, I didn't know that. Whoa. I, I feel bad for shooting that. you all the time. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, also, let's see. I did a bunch of Volus, too. I'm like the, I'm the multiplayer Vorcha, the multiplayer Volus. Anytime you see a Hanar, including Blasto, it's me. And then some other random guys. But uh, because I played the Vorcha, a local guy named Peter White made me a uh, Blood Pack Punisher submachine gun. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. Yeah, and the clip comes out and everything. It's a, it's a work of art. Wow. Yeah, I I didn't know you were that many roles inside the game. That's crazy. Yeah, one of the things I actually wanted to ask you was, like, if you could have voiced anyone else in the series, who would it have been? Well, you know, I don't want to 
uh, claim that I'm going to be better than whoever actually played the part. So, <laughs> like I could no, say, not. <laughs> I, I could say the elusive man, but that means that I wouldn't have got to work with Martin Sheen. So, <laughs> like, yeah. it, it, if you were doing it just for fun, like who would yeah. just for if fun. You had to pick one character? Just for fun, then certainly like one of the villains, like you know, elusive man or Saren <laughs> or yeah. I think Garrison Rex had some of the greatest lines. Oh, certainly, yeah, yeah. Like my favorite Rex line to this day is in the first game. It was a dialogue piece in the cargo bay, and he goes, "Don't piss in my ear and tell me it's raining." <laughs> like, it's like just the way, he, like it was just like this perfect line, and it said so much about Rex right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, I let I. It was really, you know, as I say, it was such an honor to work with such a, an amazing cast, and like to get to be the lead in something like this was uh, just a great opportunity, and uh, and again, an honor. If you could voice act any character in gaming, what would it be? Well, like, given the like, fact, like just for fun, like yeah, given the fact that I am a uh, big comic book nerd, I would probably Ooh. choose somebody from Marvel or DC, and I I do like the villains, so I'd probably go right to the top with Doctor Doom. Doctor oh. Doom. Yes, and yes, of course, Doom must have an Eastern European accent. That variant. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Doctor Doom is always one of my. He was definitely one of my favorite villains. Yeah, yeah he's pretty cool. But uh, you know, and again, I like the villains. Bizarro, certainly. I'd, I'd love to boast him. Sinestro. The the list goes on, really. <laughs> yes. So definitively, Paragon. Not no Renegade. Blah. Me talk good. No, I don't play favorites. I when I do my playthroughs, I'll play Renegade first, but then I'll play Paragon. <laughs> so, I, so I feel like redeeming so do, myself. Yeah. So I don't feel do so bad about the... being such an asshole. But. <laughs> <laughs> do you play Stem Shep at all, or do you always pick uh, pick male Shepard? I, I haven't done complete playthroughs as Jennifer. I'm I'm clearly an egomaniac. <laughs> also, I, you know, I've only had I've only had time to do a couple of playthroughs of each game, and I still haven't done my full playthroughs of three yet. Uh, just because, of course, when I play it, it's kind of like reviewing my work, and I'll ins it, I, I've compared it before in previous interviews to uh, it's like being Doctor Manhattan. I just know everything that's coming. <laughs> Ashley or Caden. Uh, I, I made this admission actually while I was sitting on a panel with Raphael Sabarge sitting beside me. <laughs> I, ki I killed Caden both times. <laughs> Rose before hose, man. Come on. Well, no, well the first time through, uh, I was with my Renegade playthrough. My Renegade was uh, romancing Ashley, and so I saved her then. And then on the Paragon playthrough, it's like, oh, my Paragon's too much of a Boy Scout to kill the lady, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take one for the team again, Caden. Yeah, so I did have to apologize to Raphael for never having done a playthrough where he lives. It's <laughs> like, it's funny because in the first game I chose, I saved Ashley, of course, but then I played through the uh, series again, saving Caden this time around just to get something different. And boy, in the third game, like, it got a little weird. It it, it got weird, but Caden, he also became like his own character. You know what I mean? Like, oh, right. Yeah, that's yeah. The thing. He really like pulled ahead. That's why I had to apologize to uh, to Raphael because like I will never get to see any of your character development in the third game or even in the second game because you're you've been dead since the first for both of me. So and yeah, I still talk about going back and doing like a complete playthrough again. Like I might have to do a couple because again, I I knew what was coming in Mass Effect Two, so. <laughs> I didn't romance Ashley or try to romance Ashley in the second game. My renegade went on to uh, Miranda, and my paragon, who had been with Liara, then started romancing Tali. So I'd like to do a playthrough where I stick with one and love on Trist all the way through. And, you know, there's so many variations. But yeah. there's only, there's only so much time. I, I liked Liara the best because it felt right as far as, like, the writing went. Right. With the whole Shadow Broker storyline, and it, it, it just seemed like she was the canon uh, yeah, relationship and choice. Lara the Shadow Broker is great DLC for sure. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> Mass Effect DLC, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again, they do it right. Bioware has always done me right by DLC. She basically becomes queen of the universe at, after that. Yeah. <laughs> what you think about it. But I mean, even 3's DLC, I, th I thought all of it was amazing. Yeah, I do have to say I quite enjoyed the uh, Control uh, DLC and where Shepard becomes an immortal Reaper God. Space I God? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I pick Space God every time. Like, Yeah, that was fun. Awesome. And also, I got to voice that ending, so that was cool. Yeah, I feel like I, I'm the only one I, who I took, really, like, the... I really liked uh, 
I played male chef. I really like the dialogue when everyone's, you know, stand. Spoiler alert: everyone's standing in the back of the Normandy, and they put, you know, chef, you know, nameplate up on the wall, and Shepard just kind of narrating, you know, that who he is now and what he's gonna do. It's a very yeah. great scene for me. I kind of yeah. feel like I'm the only one who like Moby dicks it and takes to the destroy ending. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not alone. I, I took the synthesis to ending. <laughs> <laughs> they each have their their uh, supporters for sure. And uh, I, I there's also I'm not sure if you know, but in the control ending, there's there are subtle differences between whether you're a renegade or a paragon. Uh, in the paragon version, it's a it's a little less ominous than the uh, renegade ending. Like the renegade does sound a little colder and a little more like, yes, now I am a god. <laughs> they are mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, see, yeah, I didn't finish it as a renegade, so I can only imagine how creepy and weird things get at the end the there. The cutie mortals are mine now. <laughs> yeah. I, they, they, it's just the phrasing's different on a few of the sentences. Uh, Three, but, you yeah. really got to work with some amazing talent, too. Uh, Buzz Aldrin even came in, right? I know, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that I was. Not, uh, I sadly did not get a chance to meet him, but. Oh, uh, and what did you but meet, yeah, I mean that's, pretty, meet, uh, that's pretty. I did not meet uh, Mr. Prince. No, I, uh, I've met. Let's see, who have I? And and a lot of them uh, were all meeting them subsequently, not during the recording process, but like at cons and things like that. Uh, Jennifer and I met for the first time in late 2011, actually, at a con in Florida. Uh, for the very first time, uh, we'd spoken together each other on the phone before that, and like some Twitter messages, but that was about it. Uh, Raphael, I met at Dragon Con. Uh, Courtney Taylor, uh, I just had the pleasure of meeting her at a con uh, out east, uh, genre con, at the end of last year. And then uh, some folks, uh, you know, I've chatted to, and we've done Skype interviews together, like uh, with DC Douglas. Uh, but I still haven't met him face to face. So, like I said, I'll always have that in of being able to meet someone and go, oh, and by the way, we've worked together before. So. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, I, I worked with you. That's because I mean, just through Mass Effect, you worked with some big names and. Yeah, I uh, I got to meet uh, Martina Sirtis at a uh, at a con uh, just when we were in the back hallways, and she was actually on the back of a golf cart being driven to a panel, and so I was just sort of jogging along behind her, and uh, so again was able to introduce myself as uh, having worked on Mass Effect, and and I know you probably uh, you can't say nothing, but Dragon Age series still has some life in it, and. You, yes. I know you do some voice acting for that series you've done, right? I have done voice acting for Dragon Age, yes, yes. Uh, I think we're getting into NDA territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for all you sleuths out there, I have done work on all the Dragon Age games up to this point. Hint, hint. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, Bioware does have them on speed dial. I actually just got, um, I just did another Origins playthrough. Oh, I'm cool. in the middle yeah, of yeah. one right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. for, for the record, have you ever accused your wife of being a werewolf? Uh, I have not, although my wife actually works on the... She's She's been in the Mass Effect and Dragon Age games. Oh, we were kidding about that. I, yeah, th no, I no. thought she was just... She had, like, a day job. <laughs> no, funnily, funnily enough, she did some of the female werewolves in... Uh, <laughs> 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 she did, uh, let's see, in... Dragon Age Origins, she's some of the female werewolves, and she was is... Was she the female werewolf in the scene that you did with her? Uh, I think she is, actually. No, the... <laughs> That's awesome. Although we didn't record at the same time. And then uh, she, in the first game, she plays Goldana, Alistair's sister. Oh, wow. Oh, and, and she's actually the main villain I in uh, Dragon Age. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually the main villain in uh, Dragon Age Awakenings. She's uh, the Baroness. Ah. Really, I didn't. Know and uh, I'm uh, all of the talking dark spawn in that. Like Mike will, you know, Mike will tell you about my recent Dragon Age Awakening experience. He, oh, yeah. he does not the brood mother. The final boss. <laughs> he and her did. Uh, we we did not get along. That was a night of a lot of decant Coca Cola and frustration. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was a rough one. <laughs> So, uh, so yes, as far as Dragon Age goes, yeah, well, uh, there is a third Dragon Age coming out, I hear. That's what yeah. I hear. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's what I'm hearing, too. <laughs> I, we don't want to get you in trouble here, you know, but I'm sure with E3 coming up, we're going to hear something. So Yeah. Well, fingers crossed for a return of a certain male elf prostitute. We'll see. Return I want everybody back. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, there, I don't think... There 
as a single character I really dislike. We need more Ogryn, we need more Varric. Okay, well, let hey. me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did you sleep with Jathan in the brothel? Oh, uh, no, I didn't actually. Oh, nope. okay, because that is that is me. Oh. I'm, the <laughs> I'm the sassy That's... elf prostitute. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know I that. I was talking about Severin. That's gonna change that <laughs> no, 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 I was thing. talking about me. <laughs> that would be weird. Hey, I slept, I slept with me on my playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I definitely want to see Ogryn back. Yes, yeah. Because I was at um, I was at a Dragon Age two panel in New York City Comic. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they, were, they were joking about oh, where was Steph in the second game? Did you see? <laughs> he was everywhere. So, yeah. No, but uh, they uh, they kind of hinted about you know what we could expect in the third one. I was definitely excited. They just yeah, kind of showed I, uh, a map of Ferelden. Like, in Origins, we gave you this. Now we want to give you this, and the whole map just lit up with all these other lands you only heard about, but you never got to, like, go to. And now they're, like, hinting that you could go to see all these places. Oh. Well, you know, if I if I knew anything, I could not tell you. Oh, I know. I'm just, I'm cool. just, I'm just being a fanboy right now. We don't want to endanger your family. <laughs> no, that's okay. Bioware has them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, just, I can't wait. Alrighty, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, yeah. very much. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was an honor. Thank you very and, much. Uh, and I guess this is the point where I say I should go. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that, but I didn't want to ask you with those things. <laughs> No, that's cool. Have a good one. Thank you. I have said I should go quite a few times, so it's no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, guys. Thanks again for having me, and mm -hmm. uh, have a good one. I'll uh, I'll send you the links for uh, the episode of Versus Valerie, and uh, there's a couple of uh, sketches from my uh, TV show up here in Canada that I think your listeners might enjoy. Yeah, they might actually. We have a we have, we have a big Bioware following. So. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll talk. To, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Good night. Cool. All right. So I'll just uh, send you the links through on this uh, right here. Just I'll, I'll just in the body of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll get it. Okay. Cool, guys. All right. I'll sign off. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Well. All right. So, uh, do you guys want to tie it up for the week, or do you want to cover some? New stories, real quick. Oh, you got six all right. minutes. Well, I guess the... <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. let's let let me finish what I was bringing up before. Uh, Twitch TV, I think his name was Zylon Op, something like that. He uh, he was a handicapped um, Twitch streamer, and he he was in a wheelchair. He was apparently paraplegic, and he made about twenty thousand dollars in donations off his account and on his web camera he was caught s miraculously standing up to uh go get a drink or a snack or whatever it was the miracle cure to paraplegia twenty thousand dollars <laughs> yeah it's it, it's pretty amazing so they're talking about him doing miraculous some miraculous serious recovery. talking about doing some serious jail time <laughs> for this too if you have nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars you're just out of luck yeah you have that last dollar and you can stand and walk around <laughs> uh, uh, oh my god what what a jack off <laughs> what a, what a or, jack off or maybe he rage quit his MMO so hard that he just like he forgot his paralysis <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that has got to be the stupidest like moment in all of mankind when you're faking it and you just is. get up to get like a glass of water and and, and by the gods you can walk because he's been doing this for a few years too, so it's not like he just had this quick scam. Um, one of one of my favorite parts about this video, the video is on our Facebook page, is you hear his girlfriend going, "Oh my god," and then she and then she, and then she keeps going with her conversation. That's just, <laughs> it didn't happen. And then to make matters worse, he realizes what he did, and he comes over and knocks over his video camera from behind. Like we don't know what he just did. <laughs> So not only was he lying to his fans, he was probably lying to his girlfriend too. No, this I, I, just I'm better pretty and better. sure she knew, but her boyfriend made twenty thousand dollars playing video games with her. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty legit. Well, I mean, knowing that you know he can walk. 
Ooh. So, uh, yeah, anything else? Grand oh, yeah. Um, Podcaster? Uh, we, we had a nice little Nintendo Direct this week, and there was actual <laughs> stuff in it this week. <laughs> All right. Mario, three, the new Mario we're Luigi getting... Uh, awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bu- bunch of updates about a bunch of games we already knew. Professor Layton. Uh, they're bringing Bravely Default Flying Fairy, which is the stupidest title ever still, <laughs> to America. Uh, oh, yeah, Virtual Console coming next week for... Real Virtual Console for Wii U coming next week. Uh, new Super Luigi U that's coming. Mario and Donkey Kong Minis on the Moon. Da, da, da. Animal Crossing 3DS XL Bundle. Da, da, da. So the next wave of original titles has come out for the Wii U, pretty much. I'm still not done yet. This is mostly 3DS stuff. Wow. Yeah, there's more 3DS. There's a new Zelda for the 3DS coming out. Oh, yeah. It was Zelda. Oh, and. Make a remake. Yeah, ba- yeah, yeah. Well, not a remake. Only. Sequel. <laughs> uh, I can't wait. I'm shaking in anticipation for that. <laughs> They're porting um, Oracle of Seasons and Ages to the 3DS too. Yep, 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 yep. Would be no nice. She's on Mario Party. Oh, I like. And Pikmin 3, August 4th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Deadpool finally dated. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Uh, I'm I'm still kind of like off my game because I'm in the present. I was in the presence of a commander. <laughs> <laughs> we all forgot the salute. Oh, uh, oh. Oh, well. Oh, also... Oh, check it out. <laughs> well, I, well, I said it. Whatever. Uh, also, uh, they're doing a... Uh, anyone who's a fan of uh, Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion, they're remaking it, along with the DuckTales game. i seen that. That's interesting. <laughs> I am so happy this exists. <laughs> like, I, you have no idea. This is, like, one of the first games I played for my Sega Genesis, so... And I was just sitting there waiting... Ooh, they got every other game I ever wanted. It's like for download now. I, I now I don't have to pirate this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're we're gonna be getting it. Sadly, the studio that's making it is gonna get shuttered. <laughs> All right, and I guess we should uh, finish off with my final favorite punching bag, Capcom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, make it quick. Apparently they, <clears throat> yeah, they lost a lot of money over the last year or so. Can can you guess why? I'm gonna take a stab at it and say it might be Resident Evil Six. Uh no, I was going to say game cancellations <laughs> for pre-orders, right? Four Mega Man games. They canceled for the last like three years or oh, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like pre-order cancellations, but no, yeah, no, actual. They have canceled, canceled, they canceled a lot. Pre-order. They, they, they have canceled a lot now that I think about it. Mm-hmm. The Mega Man game that could have been from an excessive outsourcing of projects, quote unquote. Hmm. Yes. Oh yeah, I I think that'll uh, I think that'll wrap it up. Uh, any final words, everyone? Nah. Pretty good. Um, our official launch date for our website is May 1st. That date is solid. It will happen. You guys should definitely uh, keep looking on Facebook. We'll definitely have the link posted up as soon as it launches. And love to see you all there in our forums. We better see you on day one. Sweet. We'll know. <laughs> all right, so... So, everyone, say good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Big mic out. We need to do like a Mickey Mouse Club exit next time. Big mic out. We're done. Stop stepping on my exits, man. Going down a warp pipe riding Yoshi's for fun. He's got a younger brother. He's not quite as cool, but can jump a little higher They got Bowser on the run In the Mushroom Kingdom, hitting question mark blocks They don't even know why 
But they're collecting coins, yeah, they're collecting coins, yeah. All the other kids with their PS3s, their Nintendo Wii's, and 360s. I'll be having fun on my NES, 64, and SNES, cause they're the best. All the other kids with their PS3s.